this is kind of only the day that the Lord has made. Oh, yes. So we have to be glad and do what? Yeah. And rejoice in it. Okay, and then if you look at the next son, uh, first Sunday of June, what day is that? Juvenile Hallelujah. 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 Um, I'm not going to take too much of your time because today I am not going to um, speak. I'm just going to host. You guys bear with me. So, because this is like a new thing for me. So, but, uh, but I can't talk till tomorrow. So, bear, bear with me. So, but we have some wonderful speakers. You know, I'm talking about women of pedigree. They are beautiful. When it comes to the word of, the, of God, you know, they are not, they stand firm. You know, they know the Bible from Rev Genesis to Revelation. They can quote any aspect of the Bible. And most importantly, they speak what they practice. They speak what they practice. Because one thing is for you to be able to talk you know, talk the talk, but not walk the walk. Our women, they talk the talk, but they also walk the walk. Therefore, I'm going to introduce my beautiful sister. She's going to be the first speaker. Before I do that, I'm going to quickly tell us what today is all about. It's been tagged godly marriage. Godly marriage. Uh, I'm going to take that few seconds just to say, I do recognize that some of us may not be married. Some of us may choose to be single. Uh, some of us may be widow or widows. But this topic applies to everybody. It applies to every single one of us, male or female. When we talk about godly marriage, godly marriage for those that are single is today you can pick how do you have a godly relationship that leads to a godly marriage? Because everything that you do in your journey will definitely, definitely lead to your destination. So today is for us to listen to what our mother has to tell us. And please, I'm sure that we're all going to be impacted by it. Um, I pray for that spirit. The spirit to be able to hear and then make what we hear in, into practice. May God grant it unto us in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to take this opportunity to call our beautiful sister, our mother, um, an orator, and a motivator. I have been part of the program that she does, and she speaks, you know, in a very eloquent way. So I'm going to call our mother, senior elder sister, Shadi. I did you all. I Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. I was just wondering who was uh, <laughs> that the Lord referring to. But well, we are here in the presence of the Lord. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And this is the day the Lord has made. Yes. And it is beautiful. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, Lord Almighty, we thank you. Sure. We bless you for the institution of marriage. Sure. It is not by power, it's not by mind. Yes. And it doesn't just happen. It is what you have ordained oh, yes. from the beginning. Yes. Therefore, Lord, you will speak through us today. Amen. You will establish even posterity. Amen. And generations will be established. Amen. And the hand of God will be mighty Amen. in our marriages. Amen. And every marriage that is failing and failing, you will restore. Amen. And for the sisters and brothers who are thinking, what is What's, the, what's going to happen? You will lead them. Amen. And your name will be glorified. Amen. And at the end, oh Lord, we will, we will be, you know, we will be your brides and bridegrooms. And we will rest with you Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 
I want to welcome everybody. I want to thank you for this opportunity. And um, like I said, it is by God's grace. Um, we want, it's a very broad, broad topic, you know, that we cannot this afternoon. I think we cannot even exhaust it, if you see what I mean. And uh, but we're going to do the little bit and what God wants us to deposit here today. And, um, and it's the right time as well. It doesn't just happen. So I'm going to start with, um, I'm going to I thank everybody, the leadership of the church and the pastors and, um, and our shepherd and uh, everybody that is, that is here. You know, I appreciate you for giving me this opportunity. And uh, in me starting with Godly marriage, I'm going to talk about who we are in the image of God. I'm going to start with Genesis 1, 26. It says, then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, you know, over the birds of the air and over the cattle, over all the earth and over every other creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. And in the image of, the, of God, he created him male and female. He created them. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Then, this is the critical and crucial and significant thing. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. This is what God has proposed for marriages or for a marriage in the kingdom of God, because it's about replenishing the face of the earth. It's about establishing the kingdom of God on the face of the earth. And it's about, and this is where it's not just about whether you are married or you are not married. You are raising sons, you are raising daughters, you are building kingdoms within your household. And this is why godliness in our marriages, it is crucial and critical. God bless you. Amen. So man was created in the image of God. Therefore, the spirit of God is indwelling in both male and female. I haven't chosen specifically the verses or the passages that we are aware of about man is this or woman, you should do this to your husband. Hopefully it will link and it will tie up. But where I'm going is about man was created in the image of God, man in a generic term. Spirit of God is indwelling in both the male and the female. But there is a command that went forth and it says we should build, we should multiply, and we should replenish the earth. And this is where, like I said, it becomes critical, it becomes significant, it becomes real that our churches should hold, we should be healthy and be whole in the place of marriages, you know. And um, so we are all humans. We are all being the species of God because he created us male and female. But then last week, Evangelist Shoyaju was talking about, about what I would say. Um, he, he was illustrating in his preaching and used um, apple product. That if you do have an apple product and you don't know the use of the apple product, you know, you will probably not know how to use it. And it comes with a manual. Miles Monroe says, in order to have a godly marriage, we need to understand the purpose of each one in a marriage. So in other words, if you don't know the use of a thing, the purpose of a thing, the abuse is inevitable. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So the purpose of a thing is very critical. Yes, we have the spirit of God in us. Some spirits are still dormant because if you have not received him as Lord and Savior, you know, you are not the regenerated mind is not there in a way. It's dormant, but it's still going to be active once you activate it. You know, that's subject of another time, but we have the spirit of God indwelling in us. So, but the purpose of a thing, 
is very crucial, is critical, and it is inevitable that you should know, and we should know as a people, the reason for the necessity for godly for marriages to be godly or to be to be successful or to be promoted or to be enhanced in our community because the church is not healthy the nation is not healthy and you can see what is happening all over the earth at the minute so to have a godly marriage two people have been given roles in that marriage there is an expectation you know in that marriage that both of you should be able to make it work. It's an institution that is established in God. The expectations of a, in a godly marriage, character traits will be an example. The expectation is for you to be faithful, to show understanding. And um, both people, they are, they are different people. You know, even though you are together, but you have been raised differently from somewhere else, you have been raised differently from another place. So the way you process information, the way you do or address things, they are different from the way I do. You see that? And we can see that differences in churches as well, amongst ourselves, you know? Somebody has a point of view, and you're like, this is the way it's going to go. And then the other person, looks at it from another perspective and you're thinking that's the way sometimes they are not necessarily wrong it's just the way that both of them have been able to identify the issue and using their different perspectives but then within the marriage setting or within the family unit it becomes an an issue um so this is where patience and understanding comes in. And there's nobody who has a formula to how it works. It's going to work with those two people who have said, this is the way we want to run it. So when people are giving you seven keys to it, and this is where, for if you're looking to get married or be in a relationship, not just anyone will do. What did I say? Not just anyone will do. What did I say? Not just anyone. So it's not about desperation. It's not about have to do it. And it's not about it has to happen. Not just anyone will do, okay? So if you're, if you're faithful, if, you're, if you show understanding, if you show patience, then we need to honor the power, the, the, the kingdom of God in our homes because we carry this kingdom within us, don't we? So within your household, there has to be that altar of God to be established. I think it's Joshua 24, 15. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. We need to establish the altar of God in our household. Um, to, do, to have honor, we are to, we are to have regard for each other. Webster defines honor as high respect and esteem. And it's not just about kneeling, kneeling down or trying to bow down, you know, but it's about understanding where the other person is coming from. And this is where, and I will leave the other passages to people where say, husbands, love your wives as your flesh and wife, submit and respect. But people have used that to, 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 to in a different context. You see what I mean? To, to, to perpetuate what the popular three don't want to see happen. Because the woman is by your side, isn't it? I'm by his side. So he doesn't step on me. You see what I mean? The woman is by your side. You don't step on that woman. You don't bash on that woman. And, so, and the man is the head. And the woman is the neck. Have you heard of that? Yes. And when you turn that, so if a man thinks, you know what, well, I'm not doing it without, I, I, you know what, well, do it without you. Sometimes it might be difficult. And the Bible says to dwell with a woman that has a um, difficulty, it's better to dwell on top of the roof sometimes, you know? But that is not the woman we are. We are godly women. And our homes are going to be established in godliness. Amen. So the point is, you have that due respect for each other. You esteem each other. You give regards to each other. And um, so our conduct, our conduct will show that 
listen, I'm listening to you, but I'm not saying it this way. And it's not about, so what do you want me to do? I'm saying this because the statistics in the church is saying that marriages are breaking up more in the churches. Trust me. Marriages are breaking up more in the churches, and that will be subject of another day. So he says, um, wives, honor your husband. He says, husbands, love your wives as you love yourself. Where it uh, becomes a problem is when you start to treat the woman in a derogatory manner, undermine her, attack, slap, and hit, and curse, or threaten the children, or oppress, you know, any oppressive behavior, it no longer constitutes the traits or the expectation in a godly marriage. And this is where I will stop there and I will say to the singles, please recognize the signs of abuse at an early time, prior to committing yourself. This is how we can have a godly marriage. And this is how when there are quarrels or misunderstanding, we can, we can resolve them, you know? For someone whose marriage is, or for someone whose marriage is broken down, it doesn't necessarily mean the other person is a bad person or the other one is a bad person. It's just because, of course, there are monsters. If you see what I mean, if you have beat your wife and the, if the person is now dead, that is, that is, we are dealing with a different thing. And I will probably talk about adverse, you know, childhood adverse experiences that people have been through. So it is very, very, it is very critical that we know what we are going into. It's not just going to take that person home to mom or to dad and say, I'm introducing. Let us know a bit more about what is happening so that we can wage war in the place of prayer. Okay, there's no situation that the Lord cannot turn around. So for the single, recognize the signs of um, abuse or the red flags. And I'm saying this from the program I run, when people have come up to talk, these are the case studies, real life case studies, that people have been married for 13 years, nine years of constant beating, you know, but the first time it happened, it was a slap before they were married. And she didn't tell her mom, she didn't tell her parents, and she didn't tell his parents, but it became an issue. So not just tell you what we'll do. What did I say? Not just tell you what we'll do. So there are things, in a way, I'm summarizing what I've said. There are things to do before you say I do. There are things to do before you say I do. And this is where it's critical for parents. You don't have to say, it has to be that person. By all means, don, 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 don. Over my dead body, that you do do and then the child, the child or the lady will say, Oh, born in my faith. Then we're already facing each other. When you should be worried against the common enemy of the kingdom, of the household. Praise the Lord. Amen. I think it's Ephesians 5 verse 3. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular. So love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Your commitment to each other should be strong. Marriage is about enhancing each other. You know, I talked about abuse. I mean, if you if if Miles Monroe says if you don't know the use of a thing, abuse is inevitable. You know, but so when you know, because that means you would, uncle was, I mean, everybody show your dream was talking to us about if you don't know the use of an apple. Without the manual, you will just not know how to use your phone, you know. So it's a lifetime of both people, um, both parties, yeah. They need to understand that love is beyond feelings. And you need God's wisdom. Yes, the mushy, mushy, honey, hey, baby, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see where I'm looking? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you say like, okay, you didn't do that. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> but we need wisdom yes, to deal yes. with each other. Yes. And the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. Get wisdom, you know? Ah, we are to use, use wisdom to dwell with each other in marriages, okay? Yes. And um, 
Marriages are breaking, but we are humans, aren't we? Yeah. But we don't need our marriages to break anymore. We don't need them to ail and fail. Fatherhood needs restoration in our community. And you know why I say this? It touches my heart. Not about my own personal life, but it's about, you know, it's about the lives out there that when we are meant to be, it says wherever the soul of our feet shall tread upon in this nation, for instance, Olusha mentioned that and so our mommy prayed about it, that he will give to us possession. Oh, yes. Possession. He said in this land when you get there, because if you have that mind you are a foreigner, you cannot achieve. No, you can achieve. You know, he says when you get there, he says build houses, establish yourself, get married, do things there that is make a difference. Yes, make yourself known to people. Let it be known that I am a child of God. And in this place, we will build. And this is what this church is about. This is what our godliness in marriage is about. They can call you from the parliament. They won't, they won't be calling you from the prison because of an argument that happened last night within your household and you couldn't control this. You know, parenting is difficult, it's hard. But we need to establish the kingdom of God in our in our homes. Please, I'm I'm skipping. I'm skipping, you know I'm I'm jumping all this because I haven't got enough time. But we have started this and we're going to complete it in Jesus' name. Amen. In case of our society and community, the outcome of not building together godly marriage. It doesn't just happen. Spousal abandonment, child neglect, and abuse will continue to destroy in a way beyond its, our borders, beyond our four walls, when we can enjoy godly marriage. And um, if you're a man, you need to let this woman know you are leading that person. If there is no question, if there is no direction for me, I won't follow you. You understand? When you can enjoy godly marriage, a man you are headed in a way, or both of you are headed in the same direction. Okay? There are things you have to continue to do. Communication is key. Yeah. You know, I've met, I left it last. I've mentioned it. I've mentioned um, indwelling of the spirit, respect and all that at the beginning, honor and all that. Communication is key. If you want the river of love, by like somebody says, never to run dry. You don't see things the same way, but if not, the marriage will struggle. Altar of God to be erected. Observe your partner. How does he communicate? You know, or how does a woman we process information very differently? And this is it. I'm going to read this. In building a long and lasting relationship, each each stage of the process brings its own challenges and opportunities. The marriage, we realize in any relationship, we need to adjust, adapt to things. That marriage reveals in habits. You know, I said earlier on, we are raised differently. I'm from Mondo. You are from Oyo. Habits, behaviors, values, belief systems, different from ours. We cannot change a person to who we had hoped they would be or should I say the mistake we often make is to try and make the other person who we think they should be or who we want them to be. This is a stressful and frustrating thing for yourself and the other person. But we need to know that we don't remain the same. We change. We grow into things. That's why I'm bigger than I was during the COVID time. Just what I mean. Our clothes, my clothes that fit it, fitted right in last year, don't fit anymore, you know? So the years may ultimately, 
bring change. That's why it's our best efforts. We cannot stay the same. Not even our appearance, but our thinking will have to mature. Our character will develop and our circumstances will have to alter. Arrival of children, you left your father's house. You were pampered by the house boy, house girl. They take you in the car. They take you out shopping. Now you are married. You need to go to the market. You need to lay the beddings, you know. You need to do this. You are struggling. You see what I mean? Yes. So in other words, you need to adapt and you need to understand this, that there are things in marriages, some expert says, you know, even distressing and traumatic events, infertility, childlessness. Do we know that that's happened or it exists in our midst? Financial difficulties. Marriages that break down faster, they don't usually break down, but as a result of not processing, you know, not, not, they don't just happen in a, in a nutshell. It's a process. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I haven't got a lot of time. But I think I would have left some nuggets yes. for you here right there. Yes. And I will finish. A woman needs to understand how a man processes information. Certain traits or characteristics are peculiar. However, the way they are transmitted will be different. Okay? So you need to know that. And if not, it will be counterproductive, even though it's a good thing. So in here today, for me, and if we look at Proverbs, yeah? That Proverbs woman is a woman that builds, that nurtures, that cultivates, that does everything that needs to be done. So we need to ensure that in our homes, we raise the altar of God and establish the kingdom through the word of God, as the Bible requires us to do. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What did I say? Um, just to quickly round up on what she said, she went, she took us back to Genesis. She reminded us of who we are, that we are an image of God, that He created that image in both male and female. You reestablish His kingdom in our life. And that the Spirit of God dwell in both male and female. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And she said, to have a godly marriage, you need to have an understanding of your purpose within that marriage. She took us to expectation. Some of it is faithfulness, honor, and understanding. And she made a very important point. She said, not just anyone will do. Not just anyone will do. I am going to quickly build on that. In addition to that, I'm going to take you to, to have a godly marriage. You have to have a godly relationship. And please underline that word godly. Godly, for you to build a godly relationship that leads to godly marriage, you have to be a godly person. A godly person, what does it mean? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In that, our Father deserves a big round of applause. Beautiful. The question is, are you a godly person? And do you recognize an at attitude of a godly person? I'm going to quickly just go take us through some things in terms of godly person. A godly person is pure at heart. A godly person keep a sharp mind, which is to study the word of God. A godly person uses their word wisely, which Proverbs told us about that. 
A godly person work hard and do well. Personally, in their own personal life or in the house of God, or even in our community. A godly person devotion, devotes their time to God. God is always their priority. Never give, give up to barriers and obstacles. But then uh, there's an exclusion to that. I put excluding abusive relationships. Can somebody please go into First Corinthians chapter seven, verse fifteen, for me, please? First Corinthians chapter seven. But if you are believing the fact, let him be fact. A brother or a sister is not under bondage to such cases, for God has called us to peace. Sixteen. For what knowest thou? Oh my. Sorry, for oh, God has called us. For God has called us to peace. To peace. Yeah. Okay, continue. Sorry. 16. For what knowest thou, O oh my? Whether thou shalt say thy husband, or how knowest thou, O oh man? Sorry, which version are you reading? My one is the um, Amplified Bible. Okay. It says, God called us to peace. Those who abuse their spouse go against God's teaching, acting as a non-believer. Yeah, is that what you want to read that for me? Verse 16. Don't leave wives realize that your husband might be saved because of you. And don't be husband realize your wife might be saved because of you. Each of you should continue to live in whatever situation the Lord has placed you and remain as you were when God first called you. Thank you very much. I'm going to go back to that word that says that uh, those who abuse their spouse goes against God's teaching and they're acting as unbelievers. Um, being Having a godly marriage or even having a godly relationship, there is no excuse. There is no excuse for abuse. No excuse. Because if we, for me, I look at things that we call um, godliness and marriage, for instance. Um, there is no greater love than the love of Christ in our life. I'm going to read Matthew 22, 37 to 40. Say, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And these two commandments hang all laws and prophets. If we call ourselves a godly person, person, then this should be the foundation of any relationship. Either a relationship to as a spouse, your relationship in the church, your relationship in the community. Sometimes most of us lose it. We tend to think that I will only love those that love me. I'm afraid my brothers and sisters, you're not a Christian. Because the Bible makes us to understand that doesn't even the Gentiles do the same. What makes us different? is the fact that we are able to persevere. You know, we love unconditionally. My sister has said that we cannot change a person, but we love them in spite of their behavior. I listened to uh, someone's program that said that, uh, uh, I think I said it today, I heard it, it was on Facebook. So most of us, we, we love our children, 
but we want to train our husband. And they say it's the other way around. You love your husband and you train your children. Because don't forget they are coming, because they're going to become somebody else's husband or somebody else's wife. So please, sisters, remember, don't try to train your husband. Don't try to train your husband. Marriage can be interface. It can be interface, which means there's a lot of celestials that are married to Muslims. But all marriage have one thing in common, which is respect. The only thing I know is that if, for instance, I'm, I'm a celestial, as a celestial, you have to look at it in this way that if you marry somebody that is not a celestial, you have to be double celestial. No? Yeah, which means you have to stand the gap for the person that is not. The same thing, if you are a godly person, there is nothing that says you cannot marry somebody that doesn't know Christ. Well, you have to stand in that gap. That means that you have to be double godly. Yes. Which means you have to be godly two times. But some of us nowadays, we see it as uh, we are uh, modo day. You know, and especially most of us, when we start talking to our friends, the thing that they will accept, they will tell you they cannot accept it. My sister, I'm telling you that if you rely on your friend's advice and suggestion with every respect and humility in my heart, you're stupid. Yeah? I am saying it from the bottom of my heart, and believe me, I do respect every soul that sits here. Well, I'll go start listening. But I'm saying to you that if your friend is telling you, talk already about koi, see your koi. Then the first thing, sorry, then because there's some words that are just it's not going very well in English. I'm sorry. No, see your koi about your rebound koi, see your koi. And you know the worst thing, most of those friends don't even have a husband though. Then the first question, if you're not stupid, the first question you should ask yourself is, okay, what value does this person have to teach me when that person herself is not in my husband's house? See, so I, I still have a law that I am going to say, but I'm not the only one that is going to talk. But please bear it in mind that if you are a celestial, marrying a non-celestial, be prepared.